Studios. We welcome back to the program Natasha Serdach, co-host of America's Roundtable Radio Program and co-founder, International Leaders Summit. Natasha, good to see you again. Good morning, Gerard. Thank you for having me. You bet. Thanks for coming on. I know that uh, you have uh, sources of communication and information on the ground there in Gaza and Israel and the Middle East in general. And we wanted you to come on the program and, and tell us what you can share with us uh, on the latest. Uh, of course, two hostages released yesterday by Hamas. I don't know that this was expected. I've read the accounts and seen a couple of interviews from the two Israelis who were released, and apparently it was quite the harrowing experience. And they describe it as hell on earth. Uh, what can you tell us? Right. We we heard about first two American hostages released a few days ago, and uh, we haven't heard anything directly from them, but uh, the father and the husband actually said that it's going to take a long time for the recovery. Uh, the most recent released two hostages, uh, which are Israeli elderly women, uh, mm -hmm. over 80, 86 years old, one of them described as a as an experience is a terrible, uh, unbelievable experience where she was uh, taken on a motorbike, uh, hanging on one side with a head down, on the other side with her legs, between two men that were carrying, I mean, driving her through a certain area and then in a tunnel and she was uh, hit. And I mean, it's just uh, terrible to listen to that experience. So what we learned also recently is that the number of hostages has actually increased the number was 200 basically now it's 222 hostages kept uh, captive in in gaza by hamas uh, also we know uh, as we talk about recent events that um, uh, there were some uh, attacks on our u.s bases that are in syria and iraq by iran's proxies and there's more of um, u.s uh, military uh, army, uh, uh, actually Navy, uh, presence in the area. And in one of that, uh, there was uh, actually uh, uh, one of our army, I mean, air carriers actually intercepted or, or knocked down uh, missiles coming from Yemen, which were actually uh, um, uh, striked by Houthis, which are also, yeah. I mean, uh, actually supported by Iran. So what we see is that Iran is a culprit for all what is going on in the Middle East uh, with their uh, proxies, terrorist groups, Hamas in Gaza Strip, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Houthis in Yemen, and, uh, and also, you know, attacking our bases in Syria and Iraq. You know, it just feels like that this president is engaged more in appeasement of Iran than anything that would deter them uh, from essentially financing these terror groups, which are serving as their proxy, I believe, Hamas, who are just barbarians. But... Shouldn't we be taking more serious actions, such as perhaps seizing and taking control of Iran tankers and, and vessels and perhaps prohibiting them from participating in the global banking system? They're still able to do financial transactions and, and actually enforcing the sanctions that are already in place. He just won't come out and make a very firm, stern statement uh, along any of those lines. What do you think? Right. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, there's a, there's a military side of it and, a, and sanctions. If you talk about sanctions, we can go back to Obama era, basically, because we had very strict sanctions on Iran, banking sanctions and trade on oil uh, until Obama administration came into power. Then immediately they released $1.7 billion to Iran. Uh, right. That same policy is actually uh, during Trump's administration, we, uh, we strengthened the sanctions and and it really pushed Iran in a way that we didn't see much of uh, any aggression going on in, in, and you know, violent attacks as now in the Middle East. Then when Biden administration came into power, uh, they immediately started uh, actually reversed on policies of funding a Palestinian Authority in, uh, in Judea and Samaria, which is called the West Bank, and also resuming funding for, for Gaza Strip. Uh, although we know, you know, people call it humanitarian aid, but 
not that money doesn't end in the, in to serve the people it goes to right. you know build the tunnels which is some 300 miles of tunnels underground in gaza uh, plus getting all the military equipment which is used to attack israel so uh, you know and now uh, we learn that since biden administration came into power uh, there were some over 90 attacks on a u.s military bases in the region in iraq syria and and it was actually just a handful of times that we responded so we are basically only doing a defensive action and not offensive as you said you know go to uh, capture to you know confiscate uh, to take you know a control of uh, aggressively but we're just responding to their attacks so so we uh, as some of the generals have mentioned in, in recent in recent reports there are two two parts of our of our response military response one is capability other is a will so the enemies have to see our capability, which is there now with the military equipment, military actually um, uh, air carriers in the region and uh, us, our presence in the Middle East, which is un heightened right now. But do they see our will to respond? Meaning that's, that's, that's a missing link that has to come from Biden administration. It's a weak leadership. So we lost that peace through strength leadership that we had from Reagan's time and what Trump um, really strengthen the peace through strength. Now it's missing. Basically, they don't see our will to aggressively uh, prevent. We, we have to. It's a deterrence, deterrence, so that we didn't have to come to this point. We should have gave the signals and show the will. The will has to be perceived that we're ready to strike before we are attacked, so that we yeah. you know avoid situations like this. I mean, I'd like to see the president deliver a message that says you lay one hand on an American and, and uh, you're going to receive the wrath of all that American has to respond and retaliate. I just haven't seen that. I, and I wonder, Natasha, if to some extent he this is out of deference to the far left of his party that still uh, is is uh, supporting Hamas in this conflict and not behind Israel. I wonder if it's trying to play the middle of the road here from a political perspective. It is for sure because there's uh, this uh, far left progressive uh, were actually you know individuals and and, and groups that were uh, um, that were actually taken as a as a voter power with Obama administration. Uh, Biden continued with that uh, far left being part of Democratic, uh, you know, a, a party. But another thing that he did is that he, uh, at the beginning of his uh, administration, he uh, had, I think, Robert Malley is his name, which is a mm. against, I mean, anti-Israeli, pro-Iranian journalist who was right. in charge of of negotiating with Iran. I mean, negotiate with Iran, whereby all sanctions were uh, gradually released. Iran just got six billion dollars in a prison, uh, a prison exchange uh, swap, and and it's actually able to fund all these proxies and terrorist groups in the in the region. So basically, at this particular person who was a chief negotiator for Iran was just now and the FBI investigation for providing secret information actually to Iran's uh, officials as well as getting some of the pro-Iranian officials or, or, or pro-Iranian individuals into the Biden administration. So we have, you know, multiple risks and threats that we have to deal with because we have an enemy within now, within our administration, and, and we're not able to respond adequately. It's un it's unbelievable. Uh, I, I agree, but it, it just feels like the politics is at play here. And in my view, um, our president should never, or, or any of our elected leaders that that uh, make decisions in this arena regarding our national security, our national security should never take a back seat to politics ever. I don't care what right. your party is, and that seems like what's happening here, trying to walk this fine line and appease multiple factions, I think is endangering this country and the world. Right. I'm sorry. When you think about the Middle East, I mean, we had Abraham Accords 
that were that, that were that were actually uh, initiated by President Trump, and we had uh, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, Morocco, and Sudan joining. So Arab countries joining in normalization for the very first time. Their relationships with uh, with Israel. Uh, it was on the verge when Saudi Arabia was almost. I mean, they were negotiations were going so well that we were expected the normalizations between Saudi Arabia and Israel, which is an amazing development in the Middle yep. East. To, yep. to come to fruition, Hamas attacks. Yeah, because attacks I think they well. they see our weakness, and they and I think they one of their objectives was to uh, to interfere with those discussions and, and uh, those exactly. negotiations. Exactly. Natasha, I always Iran. appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you so much, Gerard. Thank you for having We're, me. You bet. We're coming right back, folks, in the Element Well Studio. <laughs> 